Alrighty, uh, all that. Um, so this video is just strictly about your settlement. What you need to do, you need to maintain to have an effective settlement. Uh, find the settlements is to allow you to maintain a regular um, um, also to um, add an extra you know feel of realism to the game and make it feel more of an actual experience rather than just um, an action adventure game so if you are one to take sediment building serious then this is probably the video for you um, without uh, spending too much time talking about it let's go ahead and get right into it so if you look at the top of the screen um, you can see my settlement numbers I have 20 people 33 food 43 water 48 power 114 defense 24 beds now this is something that's real key um, in terms of maintaining a proper settlement um, your beacon the same beacon you use to recruit settlers to your settlement your settlement reaches a maximum if you're managing multiple settlements you may want to turn off your beacon at your larger settlements because those larger settlements for some reason and it's not a glitch it's just somehow it's just the way the game was designed but for some reason uh, settlements such as the castle they um, receive an average of three settlers like within an hour um, so if you're having a hard time keeping people busy well that's okay let's not make them busy just yet so your radio beacon um, when you reach say between 15 and 17 people or I would say 15 just to kind of give you uh, you know a break from having so many people and not knowing what to do with them um, just turn it off at around 15 when you reach 15 people keep an eye on your settlements if you're really truly about building settlements it's really key to keep an eye on your settlements because when your population gets out of hand so does the need for the resources so with that in mind definitely uh, turn your radio beacon off when you reach a certain amount of people um, the next thing is your food now you can clearly see here that there's no food uh, let's check this little area here um, yeah, yeah we got a slight unnecessary party going on here anyway you can see here I build a fort within a fort basically to protect the radio man um, and to protect the artillery and to also protect the generators um, one of the things that has made my settlement successful is that when I build something I tend to build with the option to expand whatever it is I build so although you see a fort within a fort I can move blocks around and make it bigger or smaller um, that's just my method of operation but you know to each his own um, so we got that part out of the way um, but back to the food so if you come up here I food along the ridge of the tower perimeter so obviously there's no way for anybody to attack from down there so as you can see the food is protected and there's a iron grate right here um, and obviously there's only one entrance into the place the interesting thing about the food other than mutt fruit you can see that it says produces one um, each settler can grow and maintain up to six separate pieces of food so if you have anywhere from say 15 to 20 settlers I would put at least six people um, on food and it's really not hard to maintain it's easier to maintain a bigger settlement than it is to maintain a smaller one 
because a bigger settlement you have more people to work with and you can get a lot more done so you put six people on food and that's all you need for a large settlement um, so you take your remaining people um, you take the remaining 14 people and you give them all various uh, jobs so like for example the scavenging station this is extremely key in the early stages of playing the game um, when you have the ability to put one of these and I think you have to have uh, rank one of the leader perk um, once you get that ability I would definitely say put one of these up and assign somebody to it ASAP because um, what it does is they place more resources in your workbench without you having to constantly go out and scavenge and return and bring um, resources so this is really key to having you know resources just automatically put there it's not gonna be what you put so um, it, it does help because it, over time as it builds up it, they tend to put more and more resources now you can put more than one of these scavenging stations um, and assign more than one person to each or assign a person to each um, and double your resources um, that's a really good idea when you get the ability to create stores this is where you really see your finances grow in the game um, obviously when you get to a certain point in the game and you're able to build the emporiums uh, these big stores here um, basically what you want to do is you want to build one of every type of store the castle location is the perfect place to put the emporiums because of how many people you can have at one time I believe you could have either 24 or 25 I'm not really sure I've never reached 25 always 24 but you put one of each stores in your community um, and assign a person to each one so that's one two three four five six so if you have 20 people and you assign a person to each shop that's six people that's 14 left you assign six people to your produce your farm um, and that's 12 people so you know you have a few people left over um, everyone else um, you could let I would say uh, anywhere from three to five four people you have to in order to generate money in the community you have to have at least one person available that's not doing anything um, this is real key to generating money for your settlement you have to have at least one person available to shop it's cool if you have more but it's definitely important to have at least one person free that's not doing an activity because you cannot generate money if you do not have settlers that can walk around and shop so this is why it's important to do this in a large settlement because you can generate the most amount of people um, and I don't know if anybody has just saw that but I went from 83 to 84 in happiness um, but it's really key to focus on every little aspect of your community um, some things are unnecessary like extreme building um, you want to if you really are serious about focusing on settlements and making money off of your settlements um, the extreme building is really unnecessary keep it simple um, operate your your resources you know with the utmost efficiency um, and maintain a realistic expectation of what you want in the game so just to kind of give you guys an idea of how my uh, strategy works for me I'm gonna go to the stores and I'm gonna attempt to build a store but I'm not gonna actually build it now if you look at what it takes for me to build that store if you look at the wood and the steel um, I have that but look at the bottle caps the number on the left is what I actually have in my possession and the number on the right is what it takes to build the store now that 11,000 is a total of all of my settlements that have stores and instead of taking the money um, I leave it in the settlements for when I need to build in other settlements
So you can see I have 11,000 bottle caps. That's not even possession what I carry on me. So you could see from that actual number that it, it's actually a workable um, strategy. Um, and I definitely suggest anybody that's interested in building stores for their settlements, build the stores. When you start to see the money in your inventory, in your workbench grow, just to give you an idea, if you look at my miscellaneous, you could see that I have 200 bottle caps. I just put three new stores in this settlement. So that's why you don't see a larger amount of caps. Um, but you can see I have 200 and that's not money that I put in there. Um, if you look at my inventory, you can see that I have 1400, over 1400 bottle caps. So, um, you know, it's, I don't want it to be assumed that, you know, I'm making this up and you know, I'm just, you know, doing this just to get attention. No, far from it. I really don't have to do the videos, but I do them just because there's a lot of people that don't really understand how to go about settlement building. Um, so that's what I'm doing this video for, for those that don't understand it. Um, and I'm always open to suggestions and questions. So anyway, back to that. Um, the water, um, that's, that's also key. Um, settlers love to have water and uh, the castle once you make it to this point has an ample amount of water and I'm not talking about the water that it's surrounded by I'm talking about the water system that's been in place from the time you took it over there's a water filtration sh system that's been put there um, prior to you getting the place you can always add to it it's completely optional um, or you can basically just add water pumps throughout the settlement um, and add a pretty much build up your water as well. Uh, in terms of your power, the place has already been wired for power, um, which is a plus. So it allows you to save on resources. So all you'd have to do is basically just add power to get the place running. And you can see here that I've added a couple of big generators and I just basically attached a power line to them and added them to the wiring system that's already in place. And um, those including all the other, you know what, let me get rid of this stuff that I have on me because it keeps slowing me down. Um, so basically that's pretty much all that you have to do in terms of uh, the ground basics, making your settlers happy. Um, the more settlers you have, the more resources you're going to need. And I definitely recommend putting in an uh, ample amount of resources because no settler wants to uh, be without. So um, if you're interested and serious about prop, uh, not, I'm sorry, not property management, um, settlement building, uh, definitely keep an eye on the basics and the basics are pretty much the water the power the food um, each time your settlement grows you want to make sure you have more than enough food try not to do too much in the beginning because it uh, will basically create stress um, once you get to a, a level of having the resources you know, you can pretty much do whatever you want, but there's a smart way to do everything. Um, sanctuary for me and the castle are my primary destinations for resources. There's a scavenging station, this little guy right here, that puts resources in your workbench. Um, I would definitely say have at least two of these um, because it doubles the resources that they put in the workbench for you um, and occasionally they'll put stuff that uh, you're looking for and not easily found in the wasteland uh, such as copper they might put things like an alarm clock here and there um, but for the most part your average necessities for your settlement building um, that's what those are good for uh, you need the medic perk in order to open up the clinic um, once you're able to get to this point of, of the clinic, um, the maximum store, uh, and once you assign to somebody to this, 
they're able to cure you um they're able to cure your addictions your radiation they're able to um sell you specific items that you can use to um heal yourself or while you're out in the wasteland you can uh take away your addictions um so that's key also too another reason why you'd want to have the big stores in a big settlement it's because when you get to a level in the game where you can uh, persuade people, you can um, actually hire professional traders who will come and operate your store and also bring with them some very rare um, and very unique items. So this is why it's good to have one of every store because you can have one of every type of professional trader operating your store. Okay? Such a and uh, that's the basics in terms of people, water, people, food, and water. And the power is also covered. Um, the defense, I wanted to leave for last because that's one thing that will really drive up your resource needs. Um, build your resources up. Don't be so antsy to want to build up settlements and make these grand cathedrals of a settlement. Um, be smart with your resources. Uh, use your resources effectively. Um, in the beginning, I had to create two or three different characters. Um, or I had to actually had to start over three different times because each time I did, um, I just completely didn't follow my own advice until I actually, you know, um, just buckled down and got rid of the excitement and said, you know what, I got to do this smart. So I started building all of my resources and just kept building and when I got to a point where I had more than enough resources, that's when I started building stuff. Um, the money will come fast if you build right. So with uh, the castle, it was important. It's important. It's a strategic location. And this place will be attacked and attacked hard by all types of enemies. Um, haven't been attacked by Murlurks or flying bugs yet, but uh, ghouls, um, raiders, uh, synths, um, super mutants, they have all hit the castle. Um, and uh, you can see that I have missile turrets and laser turrets at the top there, and I'm steadily building across. But I'm operating multiple settlements, so I can't put a lot of resources into one settlement. The guard tower there, um, first line of defense. Uh, the tower up top, second form of defense. And then I have my primary defense, which is my turrets. And then if they happen to make it through the front door and hit this tripwire, they're going to run right into old flamer there and get toasted. And once they get past that, if they do get past that, then you have missile and laser turrets here and I'm still building on that uh, and you have uh, machine gun turrets here so um, this place okay without a ladder how'd you get up there anyway um, with the right amount of settlers uh, you can have this place up and running uh, really smooth um, if you only use your resources properly um, Here's a artillery striker, or artillery cannon, however you want to call it. I have one here, a uh, guard post here, and you should be right there, buddy. Uh, I have another guard tower there. Uh, you can see over there in the distance, I have another artillery striker, another guard tower here. Um, so this place is extremely defended. And you can see from this point what the inside of the castle looks like. Uh, so basically I have a fort within a fort. And um, everything that I put here is interchangeable, meaning that I can basically change the, the composition of this at any given time. Um, I can make it look completely uh, rectangular or I can make it look octagonal, however, but the purpose is to protect the radio man so he doesn't have to leave his post because for some strange reason I've heard a lot of stories about the guy having to get off the radio to fight and for some reason he won't get back on the radio so 
to keep him from being attacked, I have him completely blocked off. And there's only one way to get in there to try and attack him. And if you can make it past all of the frontal defenses that I have here, then you still have to get past these three turrets. And that's not easy to do. So uh, you can see here that uh, this guy is pretty well defended and all the generators are protected. So, and the artillery guy is protected. So there's a lot of work you got to do to try to get in here and uh, mess up my uh, property. So I'm not worried about it. So anyway, you can see my uh, workers are returning to their posts. I have everything that I need at my convenience. I can shop here. There's one other thing I wanted to mention in this video before I stop. If you talk to a settler that's manning an like operation to tower, lines. I'm sorry, manning a business tower, I'm sorry. Excuse Let me, me talk to her real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you go to barter, sure. Let's see what you got. Great. And her inventory opens up. If you look where her caps is, she doesn't have a lot of caps. If you invest into the cap collector perk, the last uh, perk in that tree gives you the option of investing more money into that shop. That way they have more buying power, you have more buying power, and you can sell more stuff to her. And each time her stock regenerates, it also regenerates her caps. So I actually haven't done it with her because I just opened this store. So let's do it with her to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to hit R1 to invest. Invest 500 caps. Okay. So her initial cap was 312. It has now gone up to 812. So you, if I decided to sell 800 caps worth of stuff, I can sell it to her. Or I can go to my workbench and take out a massive amount of resources, uh, weapons or armor, whatever, and I can come back to her and I can sell it. Now, I leave out of here and I can go to any one of these other places, um, merchandise, and I can basically make a lot of money from each one of these stores. I can sell medical equipment here. I can sell uh, liquor, uh, basically anything that's of comfort here, uh, clothing here, uh, and so on and so on. So if each one of these vendors have an increased amount of caps, that means hypothetically, or well, not hypothetically, in reality, if I can make $800 off of each one of these vendors, I am making a buttload of caps. So if you think about it, Let's just say hypothetically 800 caps here, 800 caps here, and so on and so on. I have one, two, three, four, five, six stores. Just do the math. Six times eight, what does that get you? And that's what I'm making from each store each time their merchandise and their caps regenerate. So if I have the merchandise to sell and I have the resources to sell, I can make a crazy amount of caps by having these stores here. It saves me the time of having to go to different locations to sell stuff. I could just come to each trader and sell related merchandise and get more money. And this is another thing that's really key with these stores. If you sell medical equipment here, you won't get as much. So it makes sense to go to your clinic and sell medical equipment. Okay, you'll get more for medical equipment if you sell it to a medical specialist, so on and so forth. Don't sell alcohol to an armorer. It would not make any sense. Sell your alcohol to the bar. You'll get more money. Sell clothing to the clothing shop. Do You could go to the general trader and it'll give you a fair amount of coins or caps for the merchandise you sell. But if you go to the individual shops and you sell the individual shops, related items you get more caps for those items that you sell um so if you do the opposite well you know you're not really going to see a benefit but um that's how you want to maintain your caps and again um if you look at 
if you look at uh if i wanted to build a store another store if i just wanted to add more stores you can see again i have more than enough caps because i have caps related to all of my settlements all of my settlements have uh, a resource that makes caps and instead of taking all those caps out i leave them in the communities that way if i build in that community i can just build from the caps the collective caps from all the communities so again that's not including what i keep on me so um that's a really good way for you guys to make money off of your settlement and this is just one settlement um i have similar setups at some of my other larger sites like uh sunshine trading company um sanctuary i have the same exact setup so um whenever i build new stores in the settlement uh i'm gonna make them i'm gonna make the caps back so uh this is your primary breadwinner right here this is where you're gonna make your money um and again um having these little resource stations like my man here is working on um each time he works on that he generates resources for you and if you have at least two in your settlement you're gonna get double the resources that doesn't include what you're bringing in of course you're gonna go out there and and find the specific resources that you need but if you guys think about this if you come to your trader right if you have a trader in your in your settlement okay you go to her and you need specific resources instead of going to outside vendors which charge you more go to your 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 companion I mean not companions I'm sorry thanks Tredo I appreciate it go to your settlers that are operating your shops and you go to her junk and you see all the stuff that she's carrying this is everything you need to make your turrets to make um, you know your furniture um, this has everything in it so when you get to the point that you can build the bigger stores build them the first chance you get because she carries everything I mean every single thing you can imagine she carries it you know and when you invest into your shops that allows them to carry more stuff um, you know it benefits you it benefits you to the greatest you know so um, I have 920 929 caps on me she has 945 caps in her shop that's just that one shop um, I just built these two stores so uh, if you go to this guy he doesn't have uh, the amount of caps yet so if I go to barter because I have the cap collector perk I have the ability because I have the cap collector perk maxed out I have the ability to invest into shop into the shop which would allow him to sell more items and also buy more items so if I hit invest I'm gonna invest 500 caps into his shop so now his cap total just went up to 944 from what it was previously so now I can go out in the wasteland find a whole bunch of stuff come back to him and sell everything to him and make that 944 caps I don't have to worry about him not having any more money because his caps and his resources will regenerate and you can look and see I didn't put anything in his inventory this is everything that he had when I created the shop let it shadow ch uh, chess pieces and everything that you sell to him he then turns around and sells those items so you know it's like having a reserve of the stuff that you would normally take off of gunners and stuff like that um, but every so often when you buy something uh, his stock regenerates so uh, you can see from the investment that I made into this shop he now has more money so um, that's just that one and then uh, if I wanted to I can go to the workbench and take out more money to open up more shops but that would kind of defeat the purpose of what I'm trying to do so uh, you know it's important to really manage your settlements uh, manage your finances in your settlements right because this will not be possible to do if you're squandering your, your resources um, it takes a lot of patience it takes a lot of time um, 
but just be patient invest into your your perks um, if you look at my perk tree um, the medic perk uh, you only need the first rank of the medic perk to be able to open up the shop um, the gun nut perk with no, that's not necessary for it I'm sorry uh, I meant to show you something else the local leader perk uh, you want both ranks of that. Um, the cap collector perk. Um, you can see the final rank. It says you can now invest a total of 500 caps to raise a store's buying capacity. So it basically just means that um, when they re renew their stock, they can actually purchase merchandise too. If you assume or use your, your imagination for a minute, Let's say you buy stuff from a store, they have to restock that store. When they restock that store, the next time they restock it, it could be better items than what it had the last time. So it's a good idea to constantly keep making money, doing your side quests, doing your main quests. Um, when you make money, go back to your settlements that have shops and invest into them. Um, because when you buy from them and you also sell back to them, it keeps the money in your communities. You go to Diamond City and you spend money there, that money's not coming back to your community. So it, it defeats the purpose. The whole purpose of the settlements is so that you don't have to be out there in the wasteland or go to your special place and don't have nothing to call your own. So um, what good would it do you to have 50,000 caps? I have no idea because once you build the maximum in all your settlements, there's really nothing else to build. But if you wanted to basically break a settlement down and destroy everything and just rebuild, that would be possible. Uh, you know, it wouldn't take caps to do that, just resources. So um, your resources are key. Um, it's very important to focus on your resources um, because effective resource management it means that your settlements are going to run really, really good. Um, I've watched a lot of videos where guys are building big building tall um, building wide it's not necessary if you want to maintain an effective settlement um, I, I am not one to you know some of my settlements are aesthetically pleasing and some I just focus on settlement happiness and making sure that they have what they need uh, I just did the basics for the castle built up the walls and just put defenses and put things where they needed to be my radio man is protected. The artillery uh, cannon is protected. Um, and that's my basics. That's all I need. You can see the three turrets that I have guarding the front door. Um, that's back up to the backup. You can see the turrets over there to the right, which are backing up those turrets right there. So if we go down here for anyone that may have joined, you can see I have a, flame, a, fl a flamer here, a uh, tripwire here, uh, the guard post here and you can see my defenses up top there um, So I'm not trying to do a whole lot because I just want to do the basics. I want to make sure my settlement is happy and uh, If you're focusing on the settlement happiness uh, Doing the right thing is going to keep your settlers happy uh, most definitely so I definitely recommend making sure that one you have more beds than settlers um, even if you have more settlers than beds still you want to have more beds than settlers um, water and food are your three most important things if you just use one small generator uh, your settlers are happy with whatever power you give them um, little things like I'll show you this right here little things like this right here makes all the difference and one key thing you'd want to do if you hear settlers say my back hurt my feet hurt everything hurts that means they want a chair that means they want something that's going to take the weight off of their feet don't overlook that that's part of your happiness that's part of your goal to make them happy put stuff like this right here you know the chairs um, the beds uh, you could put trunks by their beds or you can just put basic beds uh, lighting in a room is good nobody wants to sleep in a dark room um, well at least on the game that's how it's supposed to be um, 
you know, most of the lighting was already here with the exception of, say, that. But these lights here were already here. All I needed to do was just run power. Um, and that's basically it. Um, it doesn't have to be as plain as this. You could put pictures on the wall, but I'm kind of at my settlement limit in terms of building. So I can't really put too much more. I had to cut back on some stuff. Um, this is probably going to change. I'm going to make that a little smaller just because I want to add more stuff to the settlement. So this is another reason why you want to effectively use your resources. Because when you, when you look at the top, you see that yellow bar where it says size? That means I'm close to reaching my size limit. So that means that once I get all the way to the end, that means I can't build anything. I have to start destroying stuff to put other stuff in. Um, it's a headache, it really is, because th there's no point in designing a game that allows you to build these big establishments and you can't build to the limit of the establishment. Um, you know, you got settlements as big as this, but you can't put stuff that's as big as the settlement in it, so it's kind of retarded. But, you know, um, you're doing more than you can in the previous Fallout, so, you know, that, that makes a difference. Um... That's pretty much the majority of what I had to say for the videos. Um, guys can shoot me a message. Um, have any questions, um, any comments. Um, you're more than welcome to check the video out. You're more than welcome to follow the video. I don't really do videos. Uh, if I get a lot of requests to do more videos, I'll definitely do more videos. I'm a, I'm a straightforward person when it comes to playing video games. So, I, I don't do glitches and stuff like that. I just play games. It's more rewarding when you do all the work yourself. Um, so, I don't do glitches. So, if anybody wants to do stuff the right way, you know, the, the hard-working way, um, then definitely follow my videos. So, if I get more requests to do videos like that, I will. Um, but other than that, there's not much more I can say. I have other, other settlements. You guys like to see my other settlements, how they run, how they operate, how I build into them, um, what makes them effective. Um, definitely uh, send me a message, ask me to do another video. I wouldn't mind doing it. It's kind of fun, actually. Um, so uh, that's pretty much here at this point. Uh, there's not much else I can say about uh, settlement building. Um, I believe I covered the basics. Uh, you, again, you, up here you can see my garden up there. I chose to strategically put it up there. This this entryway gets hit pretty hard um, with enemies. So putting the garden here would just be a minute point because you'd have to waste resources rebuilding it. So if you put it up and out of the way, um, it's left you have to worry about. Um, so uh, you guys that came out and watched me and, and, and watched the entire video from beginning to end, I, I do appreciate your support. Um, even if you don't comment, I do appreciate you just watching. Um, whether it helps you or not, it's, it's, uh, it's basically a tutorial for people just starting out. And for people that want to learn all there is about Fallout 4 and doing things the right, doing things the right way. So, uh, sorry about the background noise. Again, thank you guys for watching the video. Um, and uh, this will be it for me. Have a good day, guys.